Welcome to MTV List. My name is Sean Ouellette. This episode we will be counting down the top 10 fastest bikes of the 2016 UCI Downhill World Cup season. Coming in at number 10 is Pivot Bicycles and their Phoenix Downhill Bike. Pivot finished the year with a score of 200 points. Pivot had a 7th place in Leo Gang and an impressive 5th place during Worlds at Val di So. They had a strong finish to the 2016 season, and I'm sure they will be expecting more of that in the upcoming season. Ninth place is reserved for Da Vinci. Before I address how Da Vinci came in at ninth place, I would like to express my deepest sympathies for the Smith family. Steve Smith was Da Vinci's star racer. It still feels unreal that we lost Steve Smith. As a Canadian, as a fan, and as a human being, it gutted me to hear about the passing of Chainsaw. To see him struggle with injuries in the previous two years, then to come back and start the season with a strong second place finish at Lourdes, I really thought this was the year of the Chainsaw. However, we tragically lost Stevie in an enduro motorcycle accident on May 10th, 2016. Steve Smith will leave a lasting legacy in mountain biking, especially Canadian downhill racers. He was our crown jewel and there could have been no better selection as Canada's best and fastest rider. Ride in peace, Chainsaw. We will miss you. Steve Smith had Da Vinci's best finish of the year with a second place in Lourdes. Da Vinci also had an eighth place finish in Cairns. This unfortunately was Da Vinci's last top 10 finish of the season. Da Vinci finished the year with 330 points. It was clear to see that the loss of Smith left a huge hole in the production of Da Vinci bikes. I am optimistic that Da Vinci will be back in the top 10 for the upcoming 2017 season. 8th place goes to Cube Bicycles. The 215 Cube Downhill Bike finished the year with 365 points. It didn't have any podium finishes on the year, but it did manage to finish in the top 10 4 times. It is that consistency that lands the 215 at number 8 on my list. Another consistent year and we should expect to see Cube in the top 10 again. Scott Gambler had a solid year finishing 7th place in my standings with a score of 375 points. Thanks to riders such as Brandon Faircloth and Adam Brayton, Scott had a very solid year with a podium finish in Fort William and 4 top 10 finishes. The Gambler is one of the more distinct bikes on the list with its vertical shock linkage, and it is one of my personal favorite bikes. I expect Scott to secure a couple more podiums in the 2017 season. Kona Operator is the next bike on this list with a 6th place finish rendering 570 points. Thanks to the strong and very consistent riding of Connor Fearon, Kona finished with an impressive 3 podium finish and cracked the top 10 in every race except Mont St. Anne and Val du Sol. Kona is definitely a bike I expect to see back in the top 10 next year and I wouldn't be surprised if Fearon brings a win to the Kona team in 2017. Rounding up the top 5 is Commensal. The French bike manufacturer finished the year with 2 podiums and 9 top 10 finishes. They cracked the top 10 in every race except Val Nord, which gave them a total of 805 points in the 2016 season. Time can only tell if they will be able to beat this impressive score in the upcoming season. Just finishing out of the top three is YT. The German brand relied heavily on the new signing of American superstar Aaron Gwynn, and they couldn't have made a better choice. Aaron Gwynn was the overall leader in the 2016 season. He started the year on fire with a win in Lords and then also a win in Leo Gang. Three second place finishes along with two wins gave YT an impressive 1,005 points for the year. One can only imagine what Aaron Gwynn is capable of next year after a full offseason on the 2 es I expect more big things from the YT in the 2017 season. Before we get into the top three, I would like to give an honorable mention to Polygon, GT, and Intense, who finished out of the top ten. 
and Tents finished the year with a score of 150, which barely put them behind Pivot's 200 points. Polygon and GT both scored in the 80s. The third spot goes to one of the most successful bikes to ever ride down a mountain. This brand has had some of the most famous names in mountain biking riding for their company, including Greg Mini Minar, Steve Pete, and Josh Ratboy Bryceland. This bike is the Santa Cruz V10, which finished with 1,265 points. Santa Cruz had a very impressive year, and this was in large part thanks to the smooth and fast riding of Greg Minar. Minar struggled early in the year, but a win in Fort William helped boost Greg right back into the swing of things. 2016 saw the rise of young American Luca Shaw, who finished the year on fire and is raising a lot of speculation as to who he will be riding for in the upcoming 2017 season. Could we see him join the Santa Cruz Syndicate? a team that will be without retired Steve Pete and Ratboy in the 2017 season? And no, it's not a bad dream. Ratboy will not be racing this upcoming season, which is sad news to a lot of fans, especially me. We hope to see you around still, though, Ratboy. It won't be the same without you. Between first and second is only a mere 330 points, and if it wasn't for a crazy finish at Worlds at Val d'Isol, Specialized would have won my best overall bike for 2016. Led by the unbelievably consistent Troy Brosnan and the French superstar Lorc Bruni, the Specialized demo cracked the top 10 in every race of the season, which included a win in Cairns, two second places, and three third place finishes. It was great to see Bruni get his first ever UCI win, but heartbreaking to see him have a mid-season broken collarbone, which in effect took him out of the overall standing for first place. The Australian Brosnan looked like he would get a couple wins this year, especially in his home race of Cairns, but fellow Specialized rider Bruni stole the show. I predict 2017 will be a year for Specialized to remember, with many wins coming their way. The dominance of Gwyn is almost expected, as long as he is healthy, but to me the biggest surprise of 2016 was the late season dominance of the red car rocket Danny Hart. The first four races of the season for Hart were impressive, but nothing compares to the four wins he had to finish off the year. He kept Quinn on his heels, which I believe led to one of the most exciting seasons of UCI downhill racing, and this was in large part due to the Mondraker summum. Danny looked to be unstoppable on the Mondraker, flying down the hill in neck-breaking speeds. To see him in person at Mont St. Anne was breathtaking. I didn't think it was possible to push a bike to its limits like that. However, Danny wasn't the only solid rider on a Mondraker in 2016. The giant Florent Paye Greenland helped Mondraker secure the top three spots at Valley Sol, which is something I don't ever recall seeing. Mondraker finished the year with 1,835 points. Do you think Mondraker can maintain their form for the 2017 season? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching MTB List Top 10 Downhill Bikes of the Men's 2016 UCI Downhill World Cup Season.